Okay, for this demo, what we're going to do is create a surrealistic sur uh, circus image uh, using some images that you should already have downloaded. Um, if you don't already, you can probably get them by going and connecting it to the server. And it's the server is 10.3.1.50. Enter your credentials. And go into the art turn in. And in there should have the uh, circus images uh, that you need. So, and it should be all good to go. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to bring a new file in. Now, I just want to remind people do not place these. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily easier for you to do it that way. There's more work and potentially problems you might have. Uh, so what you're going to do here is I just have my second folder or my folder up here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in this image, which is just kind of like a field. And we're going to bring that in or drop it down to Photoshop at the bottom of the screen. And what I'm going to do here is just select all, um, Command A, Edit Copy, and then I'm going to paste it into my new file. I'm going to get my Move tool, and I'm going to make sure that my Show Transform control up here is um, checked. And I'm just going to hold on Shift and scale this thing up. And what we're going to do here is try to make this appear that the head uh, top is actually this dirt image. So once you do that, go ahead and hit enter or double click and then you're going to turn off the eye for that. The next thing we're going to do is create an ellipse shape. So we're going to go to our elliptical marquee and go to a, the ellipse tool. And what we're going to do here is basically try to create uh, an open circle as if like a platform for the top of the head. Now I'm doing it a little bit low, uh, but I do want to make sure that I'm stretching end to end. And I'm not clicking off this tool, I'm leaving it on so that I can move this up into place um, about where I would want that to be placed. And if it's not good, you know, you feel free to go ahead and do it again. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is go and turn on my image of the dirt. And I'm actually going to stay on this layer. You want to make sure you're working with that layer. Um, so you have the top selected. Uh, we actually want to delete the, uh, the other stuff, the outside. So we're going to go up to select and go to inverse. And now we have everything else but that middle part. Select them and hit delete. Okay. And you still have a selection, so I'm going to Command D just to deselect. And then I'm going to move this up into place if I need to. Um, another thing that we had kind of played around with in other classes is using, I use the magic wand because I know that this image right here, everything on that background is blank. So I just click it and I go select inverse again. Now I have that uh, center part selected. And one thing you can do is uh, create a new layer. And what you would do is go get your gradient tool. And for the gradient, just have it be instead of uh, instead of being clear and a color, have it be clear and black. And I'm hit OK. And what I'm going to do here is basically just drag on this new layer that I created, and let me do that. And what this is creating is just kind of like a shadowed feel to that. Um, I could go ahead and drop that opacity down a little bit. And what it does is it kind of creates there's a little bit of sh uh, shading and shadow to the uh, top of the image. So, so far so good we have this in. I do want to save this. So I'm going to file, I'm going to save this as to my desktop and I'm going to call this Surreal Circus and hit save. Next thing we're going to do is bring in a background. Okay, so we're going to go to our folder here and this is the one we want. We're going to do like this spacey background. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down to Photoshop select all which is command A, edit copy which is command C, and then I'm going to go and command B to paste. And what I want to do here is go to the corners and rotate this so this is actually a vertical image now. And double click and then I'm just going to stretch this up so that, ooh, I got to get a little bit out of control. Stretch this up so that this fills the entire image and it's like the part of the background that I want. It looks good. So that looks good. Now this is going to be a background so we do want to bring this underneath um, our clown uh, image here. From there, what we're going to do next is start bringing in some of these um, things. So one of the things I want to bring in is uh, are these lights. So I'm actually going to drop these in, but these I want to bring in a little bit different way. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to bring stuff in. I'm going to use my magic wand tool because the magic wand tool selects colors and this background is almost all the same color. So what I do is click and what you're going to see is it select a lot of it, but not everything. So what you're going to do is hold down shift and 
continue while holding shift to click and select more areas. Now if you accidentally click on something that you don't want, you can command Z back. So I have the background selected, but I actually want to cut out the lights. Oh, and I missed a spot there. Um, and what I'm going to do is go select and inverse, because I actually have the background, I want the light. So select inverse, and then I'm going to go edit copy, and I'm going to start closing down some of these extra like windows, I don't need that one open anymore. And edit paste, command V. And now it's on here, but it went underneath the clown face layer, so I just need to move it up. Okay, and there it is. Um, if it's hard to see the lights, you might just want to turn off that background layer. Just turn off the eye on it. So these are up. Now, I might actually want these separated a little bit differently. So uh, we want to cut one of these out. So what I was recommending using was the lasso tool over here, just the regular lasso, and basically circling one of these. And then instead of copying, we want to cut it. So Command-X, and then Edit-Paste. And now these two are on separate layers. You can see them up here. Now, one of the things that's not a big deal, but you could do is you could um, make sure you hit enter or double click every time you change something. You may want to have auto select on for now, just so you can like click on certain layers. So your auto select when you're working with your move tool is up here. So I like to have these on sometimes, not all the time. And I'm just gonna shrink on that light and then double click it. Now, one thing you could do is Lay, uh, you know, rename these so I could right click. That's the uh, right light. Okay, this one's the left light. This one is. Uh, oh, that's like a, the gradient. And this one is uh, dirt. Now, you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of doing this so you guys show. You kind of understand because some of these might get look kind of small and you're not real sure what it is. So, that's a good way to just kind of label stuff. All right. So looking pretty good here. Um, so really, like what I do want you to do is try to get all these images at least into Photoshop. All right, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do the lighting first, and then I'm gonna start showing you another tool to use to bring these in. And really, here the goal is for everything to be very clean. So I'm gonna go up to my polygonal lasso tool here now to make the lights, and I want to make a new layer. So this layer, I'm clicking on the top layer, and I'm gonna make a new one by clicking in this little icon next to the trash can. And this one's going to be one of my lights. So what we do here is we basically are kind of saying, okay, where would the light shine up? And what I'm going to do here is just click to kind of draw that path of the light. And I'm doing an outline. So you don't want to do just the center part. You kind of want to go back, connect. And all you're doing here is kind of connecting the dots. And if you get back to the zero, to the first point, then it'll turn into a selection. If it doesn't, you can double click. If you get off, you can command D to deselect. Um, but we have this on layer four, so we're going to fill it. So I'm going to get my paint bucket tool. Now, you don't have to do paint bucket. You could do a gradient if you wanted to. Um, let's try, like I didn't do a gradient in the demo um, in class, but this would be something you could do. So if you wanted to go here, I'm like, okay, I want this one to actually be like a light blue or something, teal. And maybe I'll push this up a little bit so there's even like less of a transition point. Hit OK. I can go on that layer and actually drag so that that light, and actually this one looks pretty good. It's fairly realistic. A lot of different ways to go about this. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to Command D. All right. And now it looks kind of good, but it's like still not fully realistic. So what I want to do next is go up to my filter and blur. And I tend to use Gaussian blur. And what you're going to see right away is you're going to have that light source kind of just blur out. I'm going to hit OK. And that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Make a new layer. Get my polygonal lasso, and I'm just going to go ahead up and create that light. You can always go back and erase stuff too, so just have a heads up there. And then maybe I'll do this light a little bit differently. I'll have this one be um, just a regular paint bucket tool, and so you can see the difference. So there we go. Command D to deselect, and now I'm going up to filter and blur, and then Gaussian blur once again and I want that pretty blurred that's pretty okay the lights color don't really matter much um, especially because later we're gonna end up unifying this with some adjustment layers I think that one might be a little bit too intense so I might go up and just bump down the opacity on that light okay looking pretty good um, and let's see so I'm gonna save this command s and now I want to start bringing in some of these other um, items so you know something like the photo uh, I'm sorry the uh, this person on the rings, it wouldn't be a bad idea maybe just to use like a quick selection or magic wand. Magic wand selects color, so let's see. You can see how quick that selects a lot of things. Uh, but it's missing a lot of areas, so I might command you to deselect that. So I'm going to try to go in with quick selection and 
you know, see if this one works okay. Not bad, really. Um, but there's other ways to do this, too, that you can probably, you know, maybe, maybe not necessarily save yourself time as much as um, you can get it really perfect. I'm going to show you one of those ways. Um, and this tool is called the pen tool. Now, the pen tool works is you're basically outlining the entire thing that you want to cut out. Um, so we're going to make it into a selection. And how the pen tool works, I'm just going to kind of show you here. As I click, I make a point, and I go over here, and I click and make it up, and I hold, and I can adjust that line. And these little things, those like lines with the dots, those are called handles, and those allow you to curve the line if you go and switch to your convert anchor point tool. So you can click on that one, and you can stretch it, change it. Um, you can also change the position of a point if you go into this little arrow right here and go to the direct selection tool. That will allow you to click on a point and move a point. Um, but if you wanted to continue the path, you would just go back to your pen tool, click on the last point you made, and then keep going. Um, you can also use that to minus, uh, let's see if that's working. I thought you could minus it, but I guess you'd have to go here, see your delete anchor point tool. And then I'm just connecting the dots. And then after I connect the dots, I'm gonna keep on my pen tool. I'm gonna right click on that line and just say make selection. Okay, now I could use this, but obviously it's not perfect. It's just like a big blob of, of this image. So I'm gonna deselect and I'm gonna show you the right way to do this. So what I would do here is I would go with my pen tool and I'm literally trying to go on the outside of this. And really, I would probably even get a little bit closer in there to do this, all right? And your goal here is really to have as few points as possible. So I'm just going around and I'm trying to like use it. You can see that curve got a little bit off, so I might go back and adjust it now. I don't have to, I could do it later too. Um, and I'm just gonna select my last point that I was on and then just keep going. Okay, so. Now, if I mess up, I can get just Command Z real quick. But really what you're trying to do is be as clean as possible, okay? Um, professional grab designers would use this um, to really make sure that they're getting the best you know, cutout uh, ability for you know making selections and stuff. And really you can see I'm clicking quite a bit there. I'm working a little bit quicker now just for sake of time. But I still want to make sure I'm doing a good job and keeping everything clean. Um, I'm using my uh, zoom function on my on my computer, but I could also just, you know, just as easily go on my zoom tool, click, or hold on option, and, and back out. Okay, so I'm going to go back oops, to my pen tool. You do have a freehand pen tool in there, too, which I have not talked about in class, where basically you can draw a line and do the same thing for it. Um, in this case, though, it may be kind of difficult because it's a pretty complex shape. And this one's actually fairly hard, actually. Um, now, I'm going around the whole body up there um, except for that inner part like right here I'm not going to touch that yet I'm actually going to use my magic wand to get that out all right but one thing I'm not just clicking and, and then picking up and making another dot sometimes I am but a lot of times I'm clicking and I'm adjusting that point and your goal here is really just to get back to oops, uh, point zero I'm gonna think I'm on the last point here, so I'm trying to just connect the dots here. Alright. So I kind of have my selection here, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna right click on that line and I'm gonna go make selection. Okay, so I have I'm gonna hit okay, zero uh, feather, and I have my girl cut out. Now something happened up here. I don't know, like when I was going around that I didn't Maybe I skip that. So for today, I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Um, or I guess if I was being really kind of like crazy, I could go to my quick selection. You can actually use this to add this on. So I'm going to hold down and just kind of plus this out. Right, so that's kind of a good way I'm going to do that just for a second. I like to click a little bit because if I mess up something, then I can easily go back and do it for every click. So like right there, boom, I get right back. And I'm just using my um, brackets to the right of letter P to just blow that up a little bit. pretty good and now I'm gonna go to edit copy go back to my file and edit paste and there's my acrobat okay and I'm also gonna use my magic wand just to get out that middle blue thing 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and place her kind of somewhere in this image, you know, like somewhere where she would kind of make sense, like up at the top, right? Kind of swinging in just freely. And so far looking pretty good. Now, you have other images in there. Some of these would be fine to cut out in different ways, particularly this one, Magic Wand, would be great. Um, the Elephant Pen Tool would be awesome for that. Kind of tricky. There's a lot of dark areas. The Tent. Um... A lot of different ways you could probably cut that out. I might use Quick Collection. I'm not going to be crazy about it and try to get like those lines. I probably just get for the shape of that tent. I could even show you real quick in let's see, Quick Selection. How to do that? So again, I'm not going to be super ridiculous about trying to get this out. You could easily just kind of all right. If you decide to leave a little bit off there, it's not a huge deal. But again, you know, if you see some lines that are not looking uh, real clean, you can kind of touch them up. Oops. All right, now I'm just going to Command-C to copy. Command-V to paste. Oh, and, and I actually selected the wrong thing, so I have to go back here. All right, so I selected the background. I'm going to select inverse to switch it. And then edit copy. And then we'll go back to it. And edit paste. Just a quick version of it. And I'm just going to show you, like, I missed a little bit at the top, too, that you could, you know, you can see that little black line. Um, I could go in just with my regular eraser tool and just kind of clean up that line. Just a little eraser there. So this one you could put, and there's like some little like things in there that you, you know, you could clean up way better than I just did. I am gonna put this though. I'm gonna double click just to set that side. I'm gonna put this in below or behind these other items. Um, one of the things I do want you to potentially play around with is trying to make shadows. Now to make a shadow, um, I'm gonna turn off the lights so you can kind of see this a little bit better. Hit enter to rescale that. When you make a shadow, we're gonna pretend like maybe the light source is from behind. We want to cast it in front. So what I like to do is I take my magic wand or selection. I try to select the outside. So here's the tent. I'm going to click in the background. And I'm going to go, all right, I want this shape to be that, that um, shadow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and select inverse so that I have the tent instead of the background. Make a new layer. And on the layer, I'm just going to paint a solid black to fill in that shape. And I'm going to deselect there. And the reason I did that is so that I can take this thing and actually just flip it onto the front of this image here and maybe tone it down a little bit All right. and potentially go in and filter and blur it with Gaussian blur. Maybe that's too much. Let's do it a little bit better. That looks pretty nice. Hit OK. And so that's a really easy kind of um, effective way to make a really you know, kind of interesting looking shadow. Again, like I have some little things that are kind of left here, like this little, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, with the circus tent, still got some like blue specks in there. I could go in and kind of get crazy and clean that up. Or I could just use my um, eraser tool and get really crazy and get in there. All right, so looking pretty good. All right, so we have our lights. We have um, an acrobat. We have some other stuff in here. Now, to really finish this piece up, what we're going to do is add some adjustment layers. Okay, so first thing, layer. And well, actually, let's save. So file save if you have not recently. We're going to have to layer new adjustment layer, and we're going to go down to gradient map. Okay, I'm going to assign, I'm going to click on this little thing over here, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to say, all right, I want this to be, um, go like a nice blue color. Hit OK, hit OK, so it's going blue to white. All right, and then I'm going to make another one. Okay, now you don't have to make do this now, but you do realize an adjustment layer just kind of unified your piece. But it's maybe a little bit too blue, so maybe you want a little bit of that uh, that original color to pop through, so maybe tone it down a little bit. Let's see how that kind of worked a little bit. You could also do it manually in certain areas. So like, okay, I want kind of this to work, but maybe I only want, so you can see your mask here is white. I only want some areas to be kind of a little bit blue. So I'm going to maybe go in and just hit with my paintbrush and go in to get a black color because my mask is white and just going in and kind of like allowing some of that original color to pop through. Right? But it's still you know unifying our piece. Okay, it looks better. It looks like everything's kind of coming from the same image. Uh, let's go ahead and make another one. Image adjustments, gradient map. I'm sorry, layer, a new adjustment layer, and gradient map. And let's go ahead and make this one a red one. So 
switches to black and white, go in. Or maybe the magenta would be nice. Hit OK. And you could keep doing this thing until really like your image is kind of you know unified but has like a bunch of colors working in it. Um, you can say like I really like how those lights are kind of coming out at this point. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm erasing that red and exposing the blue, which the blue had already been erased to expose the original colors. You can also flip flop these, like if you want to say, okay, maybe I want this more blue. I kind of like the red, pops a little bit better. Um, but that's just something you can do to really unify this piece. Um, maybe I feel like I need another adjustment layer and instead maybe a brightness and contrast one and maybe just go in and all right, here's my brightness and contrast adjustment layer. I want it to be a little bit higher contrast. I want it to be a little bit darker, you know. So you can kind of play around with those things and just see what you like best. Um, the one thing I'm going to do last here, because um, this is looking pretty good, I just want to make sure I get a bunch of other things in there. You know, you could have things swinging from underneath. Um, you could work some brushes in here if you wanted to. Is I'm going to go down to the bottom and actually between my clown face and my background, I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to be on the background layer, the one with the, uh, the space. I'm going to hit uh, new layer. And on there, I'm just going to go get my paintbrush. And I'm going to go maybe get like just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll go like a light blue. What I'm going to do here is to pop this head out and all these things from behind out. I'm going to go and I have a really low opacity soft edge brush. I'm just going to like slightly tap that guy just to kind of make him stand out a little bit more. Okay, and if it gets too much, you know, you can tone it down. Um, you could also do some stuff where like maybe you go in with like like an old lasso tool. And I'm just going to draw like some shapes. So there's a shape. And these are actually behind the head. So even though they look like they're above, oops. And then what I'm doing here is, all right, let's make these like specifics. Let's go to green on that one. And I'm gonna deselect. Now I got these like kind of weird lines. That that might be something you like. Or okay, if I don't. And I don't really mind them actually, but I'm maybe going to blur again because we use this quite a bit just to kind of soften these so they're not too intensified. All right. And then I'm just going to turn off my extra so I can kind of see what this image is looking like. And boom, there we go. We have kind of this surrealistic circus that's kind of playing out in this guy's head. So go ahead and save your stuff, and then you are good to go.